should really take seriously um, the idea which is behind the European construction, which aims at peace and the avoidance of armed conflict and the creation of a sort of civilization and a political structure that might avoid such conflicts. And this is, was, and still is one of the main attractions for people of various political outlooks to invest some of their political energies in some kind of European construction. And I should uh, emphasize this because I would uh, launch myself very shortly into an apologia of the idea of national self-determination. And um, the two things, I think, um, uh, the question of war and peace, uh, the question of uh, imperial and national and ethnic uh, conflicts combined with the class struggles on the one hand, um, uh, which, uh, you know, European Union serves, of course, this double task, to avoid war and to avoid revolution. These are the two main functions of this institution. Understandably, since it's an institution of bourgeois democracy, therefore it is supposed to defend that. Um, on the other hand, if we take the democratic ideal seriously for a moment, which people on the whole don't, then we should uh, consider the very elementary fact that the basic idea of any kind of modernist idea, modern idea of freedom, is of course the idea of autonomy, which, to simplify, would mean that the freer we are, the more the subject and the object of power coincide. And uh, as opposed to heteronomy, right? So the idea of the 19th century, in which not only the rule of uh, aristocratic and priestly castes was opposed, but also rule by foreigners, by foreign courts, foreign dynasties, supranational entities such as the, uh, the whole construction of the Holy Alliance. We should not forget, especially here in, in, in Central Europe, that 1848, was a revolution against international reaction, against the Holy Alliance. And at that time, the idea of national self-determination was the idea of progress. You know, the Garibaldis and the Mazzinis and the Kossuths and so on. I won't include Ielaches in that, but... And I think that even today, uh, to be ruled by institutions and authorities you cannot control, is indeed, you know, very simply in contradiction with the most elementary idea of democracy. You know, the, and at the moment, of course, there are many instances, many authorities, many forces alien to the citizens that are being ruled, who are being ruled, who rule them. You know, some of them are formal, some of them are informal. There are a plethora of international organizations about which citizens of all countries exercise no control, you know, WTO and such like. And, um, and also, of course, there are the informal influence of international capital and also the uh, aspect of nation-state politics um, especially military and uh, financial regulation and so on, where even national governments decide issues in cooperation with foreign elites that are supposed to be accepted without any further ado by national parliaments. Uh, we haven't seen in the last 40 years national parliaments really questioning NATO strategy a little bit of murmuring here and there, but on the whole, there were... So, so I think that a uh, uh, genuinely democratic and a genuinely socialist strategy about Europe 
has to take this into account when judging when to prefer uh, supranational solutions and when to prefer nation state solutions. Uh, the guiding principle, I should think, would, should be the idea of autonomy. And, uh, and also, of course, you know, the, the welfare and the safety of the concerned. It would be perfectly impractical and, and hypocritical not to be aware on, in this continent of the fact that national passions, even if morally justified, even if politically very well motivated, can, of course, become very dangerous. But this sentence I just pronounced, of course, is always, you know, the sentence also pronounced by supranational bureaucrats who would, of course, legitimize their unelected uh, policy making and their interference in popular will with this. We shouldn't give in to, to such rhetoric, but at the same time being aware of the extreme danger of conflicts. And I really, I don't have to tell you in Zagreb how those things uh, can look like. And um, so, um, so what I think is that it would be the um, quite obvious as a phrase, quite obvious phrase that, you know, the European left should aim at a transformation of the European Union and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Most people tend towards uh, an upkeep of the European Union by making it more social, more responsive, more responsible, more democratic, more social. Let me add to this in order to um, aim at sincerity. What kind of European construction is that which excludes some European countries? I don't believe in any European construction in which Russia plays no role. If Russia is not a European country, which country is? And this you know, major European power has always been and still is. And also countries in the Russian orbit uh, are also European countries and this uh, uh, union could become uh, egalitarian in the national sense, i.e. equality between peoples. This is also something forgotten, that you know, progressive forces in the past were supposed to aim at equality between nations, equality between countries, where you know, the richer and the stronger countries were not suppo su uh, supposed to lord it over the weaker and poorer ones. You know, it's time, it's high time to, to come back to, to old, the old, old uh, uh, wisdom of having equal rights, equal rights, and which um, at the moment don't seem to be quite the case in the European Union or anywhere. <laughs>